Hello guys, how are you? The Kotolik is here. So in this video we're gonna see how to create widgets. We're gonna see what are in general widgets and what are their advantages of using them. Okay, so let's go to the um, widgets folder and first of all I want to show you the existing widgets which are in layout. So let's open main PHP and here we see this navbar and nav, uh, navbar and breadcrumb, alert, and so on. So widgets can be used in, in two ways. The first way is to uh, use the widget static method um, and it just generates the HTML or does something uh, what the widget generally does. Uh, the second way is to uh, use begin and end methods and we're gonna see both of them. So this breadcrumb, for example, which is a widget um, in the in the core e widgets uh, namespace, uh, this just generates an ordered list with uh, Lee elements inside it. Okay, so if we navigate, we see this um, an ordered list, and this is basically a breadcrumb. Um, so when you create a widget, you need to extend from the e base widget class. Okay, so let's do it and create a widget and call it let's do it like button widget okay and we need to extend from uh, eBay's widget class and then we need to in most cases we need to override um, two methods init and run okay so in init method, we need to do all preparation things uh, about the widget, and in run method, we need to return the HTML what we want to use, basically the HTML of the widget. Okay, so let's um, let's do like this. So I'm going to return a button from this run method. Okay, and just right here click me okay and let's use this button widget in let's use insight index okay so at the top let's use this um, my bad button widget and let's use widget method okay and let's go to the browser and go to the main page and here we see this click me okay so this is basically a button rendered from the widget. Uh, let's pass now parameters to this widget. Okay, let's say that I want to customize the button text. Okay, and let's give here not click me but submit. So the button text should be submit, and we need to handle this in our widget. So let's go to the button widget and add here public property text. Okay, which by default can be null, or we can just skip the default value. And after this, uh, we don't basically need to do anything in the init method. Um, and we can directly use this text right here. So this text, okay? And here is the text of the button. If we want to do some preparation things, like make the text in uppercase and then put it right here, we should do this in the init method. So this text is uh, let's convert the first letter um, of this text, okay? So, and let's pass here lowercase submit, okay? So we pass lowercase submit, we uppercase it, and then we render the button with this text. And we see the same result, basically. So if I just comment this line, the S will be lowercase, but in this case, uh, I uppercase the first letter, and it's uppercase. Okay, let's now create a widget and use this begin and end methods with this widget. Okay, so I'm going to do a widget which basically changes the color of the content and wraps it in a div and changes the color of the content. Okay, so let's just um, let's just call it BG widget. So it changes the background color and let's extend from eBay's widget and we need to override init and run methods and that's it. So now we need to do some things. The first thing I want to do is to start caching 
of the output. So using opstart method, I need to gather, I want to gather the output, everything that is basically a code. And here in this run method, I want to uh, get this output. So ob and clean or ob get clean. Um, we need to get this output and return a div which basically uh, will have different colors. So this div, then we need output, and then let's use the div. By the way, so the E framework gives us possibility to use um, helper classes. It has a lot of built-in helper classes, and you probably, sh you, you should, my recommendation is to use these helper classes to uh, generate some text. Like for example, we can use the E helpers HTML to just generate tag and we can give it here div. We can do the same thing for, for button. And when we use these helper classes, we have a um, more flexible way to uh, give some data, like this is a div, and here we can give the um, content of this div. And additionally, this div supports the options, which basically will be the tag attributes, okay? So we give the tag name, we give the content, and we can give some additional um, associative array, like the style, for example, is um, background color blue, okay? Just like this. And we just need to return this and just remove this. So this, this is recommended way. Okay, so let's go to the um, index PHP and under widget, let's do the following. So we don't need echo uh, just yet. So we need to uh, use PG widget with begin. And then we need to use echo. Uh, I think we don't need echo right here also. I, I'm not sure. I don't really remember this, I'm honest. Um, let's do, let's try with echo. And no, it just complains. So we don't need echo. And let's put, put something here hello world okay so let's go to the uh, browser and refresh and we see this hello world written in blue background okay so let's extend this and add possibility to give this background color okay so here we need to create a public property call it pg color which by default can be uh, white for example and uh, then whenever we pass when we give this pg color um, we can use this pg color right here this pg color okay so let's go to the index and in the begin we need to give the same configuration object we give when we use this static widget method widget uh yeah widget method okay so we need to give here like pg color uh with correct casing and let's give, give it to uh, light blue, okay? So light or light green, okay? Let's go to the browser, refresh it, and we see this light green background color. If we don't give it anything, then it will be white. So we did it like this. When we uh, inspect the element, we see that it has background color white. Widgets can also render views, okay? So let's go to the widgets folder, and I'm going to create a views folder and in the views folder, I'm going to create one view file, call it just uh, test, okay? So, um, and in the test view file, I can uh, have my HTML, normal HTML, so I can also accept some parameters right here. So let's just pre print um, echo and message, okay? So let's go to the index, not index, but in the Let's go to the BG widget, okay? And let's, let's we can use here this uh, render method. So the widget has also render method. And we can pass here views. So the render method is basically relative to the current widget class, okay? And we need to pass here views slash test. Uh, here it is. And we can additionally pass parameter, as I said. So message is hello from widget view file pretty long text okay and we have this content right here and we can directly output this content and just let's well, we can skip this button for now so let's go to the browser refresh the page um, 
Yeah, I did not remember that correctly. It automatically uh, searches in the um, in the views folder in the current widget class. Okay, so we, the, this views is basically not necessary. Okay, refresh and we see here hello from widget view file. Uh, widgets are really a handy way of uh, have a reusable user interface components and you can find uh, many third-party widgets on the eFramework website in the extensions so the, here are uh, eFramework extensions and if we just search for a widget we can see that there exist a lot of widgets like almost 400 registered just um, on the website so like file input widgets swiper uh, recapture widget, color box, uh, polling widget, and so on. So, uh, before you start writing your own widget, first make a research. Uh, maybe there exists already something created for you. Okay. So, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, share, and see you in next time.